Thank you for joining us on this webinar today, focusing on basic vertebral nerve ablation as a minimally invasive surgery in treating non-radiating lower back pain. Before we start, I'd like to share with you a quote which has caught my attention when I first started as an interventional spine and pain specialist. This quote quintessentially captures the profound challenges faced by patients with lower back pain in terms of how it affects their life physically and psychologically. As with increased life expectancy, we expect to see an increase in the instances of lower back pain issue and therefore the profound impact of it on our society at large. For chronic lower back pain, it's a multidimensional impairment on a global scale. It affects between 10 to 15 percent of adult populations in the United States accounting for approximately 30 million people. The impact of lower back pain is not only confined to the individual, but it also affects people around them psychologically, physically, and also impact our society and community at large. And studies have demonstrated that chronic lower back pain has resulted in billions in terms of lost wages and productivity and it is a leading diagnosis for functional disability and work-related absenteeism. Therefore, it is important for us to find clinically safe and effective measure to address lower back pain, as its impairment is only exacerbated by the long-term consequences of chronic opiate utilization. And that is what has led to the finding of basic vertebral nerve as a novel target in the treatment of non-radiating lower back pain. So basic vertebral nerve is a branch of sinovertebral vertebral nerve, which arises from the ventral ramus of spinal nerves. It enters the vertebral body of the spine column posteriorly to the basic vertebral foramen, travel about 30 to 50 percent of the length anteriorly before it starts to migrate superiorly and inferiorly to innervate the end plates. These nerve endings are responsible for receiving pain input as a result of ongoing inflammatory changes or bony edema. Over time, as a result of injury to the discal vertebral complex, results in chemical and mechanical sensitization of these nerve endings leading to vertebrogenic pain. There are many other elements in the spine which can result in the multifactorial nature of lower back pain. And basic vertebral nerve is found to be the dominant source of vertebrogenic pain, which is non-radiating nature without any ridiculous symptoms into patients' lower extremities. Vertebral body end plate damages as a result of injuries over time has shown to demonstrate distinctive phenotype findings on magnetic resonance images. And these findings are termed the modic changes, and there are three types of them, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1 represents active inflammatory changes, and type 2 represents subacute or chronic fatty bony infiltration as a result of chronic damages. And type 3 is the cirrhotic bony changes, which is not the target of basic vertebral nerve ablation in this setting. Studies have demonstrated that the presence, rather than the amount of modic changes, has strongly correlated with longer duration of lower back pain symptoms, stronger intensity, and more profound functional impairment as a result compared to patients who have symptoms but without modic changes. As with any interventional or surgical care, Patient selection is very important. Patients with verte vertebrogenic lower back pain commonly report symptoms as midline lower back pain, and that's aggravated by sitting, 
standing, or changing from a sitting to standing position, lifting, or flexion movement, leaning forward, and that's mediated by the anterior column nature. And there is an absence of ridiculous symptoms in their legs or any focal neurological deficits. As with patient selection, patient who has demonstrated six months or longer of non-radiating lower back pain with a history of physical findings and MRI findings demonstrating modic changes will be a good candidate to consider basic vertebral nerve ablation as a treatment option. However, there are contraindications, which are preclusion factors, and other additional considerations a physician will need to take into account before patient can receive basic vertebral nerve ablation. For example, patient who has active infection going through a pregnancy, patient who has skeletal immaturity, osteoporosis, or implanted hardwares which limit access to the targeted sites would not be a good candidate for basic vertebral nerve ablations. Patients with significant and severe systemic comorbidity, such as cardiac and pulmonary renal issues, would also preclude them from receiving this procedure because of the risk presented by anesthetic care. Additionally, patients with morbid obesity history of malignancy, bleeding disorders may be also at increased risk of complications and decreased likelihood of benefit, benefiting from this procedure. Therefore, it is very important that patients discuss this treatment option with their physician clearly and in details before deciding to proceed. Currently, Intracep is the only product line with FDA approval for basic vertebral nerve ablation. The process involving four distinctive stages, transparticular approach, targeting the basic vertebral nerve terminus at the target site. Here, we're going to see a series of fluoroscopy or live x-ray images intraoperatively, obtaining optimized Imaging is of critical importance intraoperatively to op optimize patient outcomes. A true AP view of the particles at the treatment level is of special importance. Over here, we have the trocar, the introducer needle docked on the particle on the lateral view here, and advanced through a lateral to medial approach towards the midline of the spine without breaching the inner border and multiple fluoroscopy images are taken to ensure patient safety as we mallet the introducer needle to the posterior vertebral body wall before a curved cannula complex is introduced to target the terminus of the basic vertebral nerve before it starts to migrate superiorly and inferiorly at the target site between 30 to 50% of the posterior wall. As the target site is confirmed, the stella is replaced with a bipolar radio frequency po um, probe, and the process takes place at 85 degrees Celsius to generate a one centimeter lesion for a seven minute targeted sequence or a 15 minute standard sequence if the placement of the probe is somewhat less than optimum. For the sacral one level, the general principle applies with the needle targeting the midline area and about 30 to 50 percent on the lateral view here at the terminus of the basic vertebral nerve before it starts to diverge. At the completion of the ablation process, the complex is withdrawn, and the subcutaneous and skin is closed with skin glue and sterile skin tapes. And here we see an MRI image of a patient who had undergone basic vertebral nerve ablation with the spherical lesion identified at the target site of the terminus of the basic vertebral nerve 
on these two levels. Clinical data has demonstrated basic vertebral nerve ablation as a safe and efficacious minimally invasive option to treat non-reading lower back pain. Data including level 1A and level 4 studies, including two randomized control trials, has demonstrated that patient has received between 24 to 60 months of durable pain relief, along with reduction of reliance on opiate therapy, functional disability, and increased quality of life. And basic vertebral nerve ablation has demonstrated to be a safe procedure with temporary exacerbation of lower back pain and post-surgical discomfort as the most common patient feedback postoperatively. Some transient irritation of nerve roots in the area, including radiculitis or radiculopathy, has shown to resolve within 60 days after a course of conservative treatment, including steroid therapy. There are isolated cases of vertebral body compression fractures after the treatment in patients with additional risk factors. But up to date, there has been no report of uh, spinal cord injuries, osteonecrosis, or other significant spinal cord uh, adverse event postoperatively. As a result, because of the promising clinical data and statistically significant findings in treated patient cohorts for vertebrogenic pain, multiple spinal intervention society have endorsed basic vertebral nerve ablation as an effective and safe treatment for patients with non-radiating lower back pain. Currently, this procedure is done under monitored anesthesia care without intubation or general anesthesia requiring intubation with intraoperative neuromonitoring in outpatient procedure units or main operating rooms, depending on the complexity of our patients. Before procedures, I discuss the procedure details and review imaging findings, history and physical exam pertinent findings with patients to help them understand the process and answer any questions they or their families may have so they can have a clear understanding of what this procedure entails, the process, as many patients will need time to carefully consider their options before committing to a decision. And to me, it is especially important for the patient to make an informed decision before proceeding. After which, if the patient decides to proceed, they would undergo pre-surgical evaluation with their primary care physician and other specialists, including their cardiologist, pulmonologist, or hematologist, to stratify their risk going through this procedure. Our anesthesia team will also evaluate patients before the procedure to ensure they are appropriate candidates to go on this anesthesia for this procedure. As this is a minimally invasive procedure, most of the patients go home on the same day and they return to their routine activities a few days later. Patients are advised to avoid any strenuous activities or heavy lifting for several weeks before they return to those activities to minimize any secondary injury risk. After the procedure, patients will return to clinic after two weeks so that our team can evaluate their progress and making sure their small incisions are healed as expected. And typically, there is no suturing involved and the soft tissue incisions are closed with skin glue and skin tapes, which requires no removal. Since the procedure was uh, introduced at UCLA, our patient outcome has been consistent with what has been presented in the peer-reviewed studies. And most common patient feedback after the procedure with some post-op soreness at the incision site requiring no to minimum opiate treatment for less than a week. And patient has received significant reduction of their pain between 60 to 90% for patients who have responded to this therapy and with improved corresponding functional outcome as well. 
and today there has been no significant adverse event. We have a series of images that we obtained intraoperatively to correlate with some of the MRI images that we have for our patients who have undergone basic vertebral ablations. As you can see, degenerative etiologies are significant with modic changes in the lower back. And these patients have undergone extensive treatment in the past with some improvements, but the non-radiating lower back pain persisted before they decided to pursue basic vertebral nerve ablation as a treatment option for their symptoms and benefited from which. And again, it's important to understand that adequate imaging is important intraoperatively to ensure patient safety and maximize and optimize patient outcomes. I would like to thank you today for joining us on this webinar. I hope you find the information presented informative and helpful in understanding basic vertebral nerve ablation as a minimally invasive option in treating non radiating lower back pain. We welcome you to explore the variety of interventional spine and pain services we offer here at UCLA. And thank you again for this opportunity.